quickly to introduce myself, I'm uh, Sudhi. I'm the founder and chief architect of uh, a small company in uh, Houston, Huduku. And uh, we have been working on uh, supporting Joomla on multiple databases apart from MySQL. And this session is going to cover how we did it, uh, what are the technical cha challenges, what are the things that we used in terms of the framework, how did we build the framework, um, and then even the demo of a live site that we are working on uh, for a specific customer in uh, US. And then, uh, if possible, I would also demonstrate uh, how uh, it works uh, using the CDN and all that stuff. Because uh, right now, what we have also done is, apart from the multi-DB, we have also supported the CDN co content delivery within uh, Joomla uh, natively, uh, m modifying the com underscore media extension. So as of today, we will cover today um, this five uh, uh, five items. Uh, portable Joomla. Finally, uh, it's been a long time since we have been we all have been working with Joomla, but it only works on uh, MySQL database. It has uh, serious limitations on uh, enterprise customers and. Uh, the enterprise customers I have been associated with uh, before. Then drivers for portable Joomla, uh, concerns, what are the concerns when we do the porting, uh, how would the extensions work, and what are the things that extension developers or extension development team needs to be aware of uh, to port their existing extensions to uh, Joomla MultiDB, and what are the things that they need to do. And finally, Q&A. So <clears throat> portable Joomla, before if you look at the left side, it was always working on all the four major operating system. But on the database side, it was always working on MySQL, never on uh, other databases. Of course, there were a lot of initiatives within the community that uh, we leveraged, uh, like the uh, SQL Server driver uh, or MS SQL driver, which was the which was using the legacy PHP uh, driver, and then the Oracle driver, uh, which was again uh, not really complete in the sense that you know you had a driver, but it doesn't mean anything, you, you still need to have those queries which is specific to Oracle, which was uh, never done. It was never done uh, completely. And um, so as a challenge, what we actually did uh, is before embarking on this project of porting Joomla on MultiDB was to actually take 1.5 sandbox, 1.5 code base, and we ported that complete 1.5 onto Oracle database. Uh, even as of today, there are a couple of instances where we, Joomla is running on Oracle database. So once we did that, that gave us quite a bit of confidence that you know we can take Joomla to multiple databases. And that's when we uh, started uh, using the Joomla 1.6. Uh, we were given a branch, database branch, and then we started working off of that branch. So <laughs> drivers, why did we do it? Uh, one of them was, uh, Every open source today supports MySQL, and Joomla is probably the only content management framework slash content management system which does not support multi-DB. Um, we were always using MySQL for all practical purpose. We wanted to take Joomla to that next level, that's the enterprise class. And there were situations where uh, while recommending Joomla for an enterprise customer, uh, they were sort of hesitant to actually adopt Joomla or implement Joomla because uh, the sort of provisioning of the server for supporting MySQL resources required for MySQL was not really there. Uh, and then, you know, uh, within an enterprise, it's not like, uh, okay, I have a Joomla site, I'm going to host it on MySQL and I'm done with it. It's not going to be like that. You really need 
um, a separate server for the database and there is a provisioning, there is an approval process, there is security audit for the server as well as the database. So there are the process that, you know, typical IT process that goes in and MySQL, the cost of uh, implementing all of this within an IT group uh, far exceeds the benefits that uh, open source like MySQL would offer in certain cases. So that's when, um, uh, that was one of the reasons. The second reason was scalability limitations with MySQL. A uh, couple of massive lar websites, uh, we have actually um, uh, done MySQL master-slave proxy, um, wherein, you know, MySQL master-slave uh, replication is set up and then Joomla, when it is rendering, it's, it's connecting to the, uh, you know, um, the read-only database. Um, so whenever the page gets rendered on a website, it's re it's using the read-only connections. So you have a set of uh, um, slave uh, slave setup, and you are always hitting the uh, slave database. And then any inserts, update, deletes uh, that you do gets into the master, and then the master slave replication replicates the data from the master and the slave. So that's when the data syncing happens within between the master and slave so even uh, even there uh, we had some limitations and setting that environment was a challenge uh, from technical standpoint it's not easy to do it so that's when uh, that was one of the reason the second um, reason a third reason was uh, really wanted to see joomla going places it uh, the terminologies the the uh, the terminologies the uh, you know the way it's being uh, developed or architected uh, the, it's so easy for a, an end user to associate with his line of work. Uh, if you look at uh, a typical uh, content creation or content management uh, scenarios or publishing houses, it, it, it makes life easy to associate uh, his line of work with the terminologies that Joomla uses. So, <clears throat> but, but, but at the same time, from the technical standpoint, it has it had limitations. That was one of the reasons. And then, of course, the other part was um, with the commercial databases like SQL Server and Oracle. They both have announced, um, you know, Microsoft and Oracle have announced massive investment and massive. Um, uh, uh, research and development effort in terms of uh, taking their databases onto the cloud and uh, maybe this could be a win-win situation for Joomla where we can re really take the power of Joomla, the simplicity of Joomla onto the cloud and uh, building a scalable solution. Uh, drivers uh, from business standpoint again um, instead of uh, reinventing that whole uh, area from an IT standpoint uh, you could leverage what uh, assets you have IT assets like you have SQL uh, there are a lot of companies which is uh, they don't have a MySQL database resources they just have SQL server resources or Oracle resources they could just reuse those resources rather than redeploying uh, the resources. Uh, again, that goes with uh, your licensing, support, maintenance, uh, and then uh, in a lot of situations there are interoperability of, of this, uh, you know, the data between databases. For instance, you have, an, if you are a typical ID shop, you have, you have all your apps running on SQL Server database or Oracle database, and then how do you really make it work um, or how do you extract data out of that and show it on a Joomla site? So that's again a big challenge. So in so those sort of situations, uh, you know, a Joomla solution running on uh, MultiDB would be an ideal solu solution wherein you can just write a module or, uh, you know, use the same DB framework that Joomla uses to query the database and uh, show the results on your web page. <clears throat> of course, um, a lot of sessions, if you have attended so far, everybody talks about Joomla as a platform and there is uh, uh, an effort to make, uh, separate the content management from the core libraries and release it uh, at some point in time, by end of this month, I guess. So, <clears throat> so 
concerns of a portable Joomla. So what are the concerns now going forward? Now we have done it, it's on a branch and it's in the process of getting merged into the core. What are the concerns now? Uh, as you might all know, if you have gone through the release cycle um, of Joomla 1.6 um, or any point releases of Joomla, there is, uh, you know, there is a series of people or a group of people who squash the bugs, they test it. Um, all these days it was all one database. So any modification, it was always testing against one database and it works and you know, uh, you get the approval to release it. But moving forward, uh, you'll have more databases to test. Uh, you know, we need to have some sort of a process to make sure uh, we don't contribute uh, any code which would, which is MySQL specific. It should be any code we contribute has to be database uh, independent. Then uh, to that effect, um, you know, we need to enforce the Joomla DB framework uh, that has already been in place. Um, with all this coming in, uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, how do we, uh, I mean, till what time do we support Joomla on MultiDB? Um, I think the effort that we all have put in um, should uh, should be uh, continued um, till the life of Joomla. At the same time, uh, it, if it becomes part of the core, you know there is a there is a, every reason that it would be continued. Uh, now that I mean, I can as of today, I can pretty confidently say uh, that it's going to be part of the core because I've seen it happening. Um, and I think very soon we will have Joomla on um, multiple databases. And another uh, serious uh, issue is the availability of the popular, uh, uh, popular extensions. Uh, there are over 5,000 or 7,000 extensions in Joomla, um, but none of these uh, extensions are supporting multi-DB. It only supports MySQL. Uh, so we also need to work towards that goal of uh, helping the extension developers, extension development team to make sure their extensions are ported to um, multiple databases. I mean, all they have to do is as long as they have their um, uh, extension uh, 1.6 compatible, all they have to do is write their SQL queries uh, using the DB framework. That's all they need to do. After that, uh, we haven't modified anything beyond that. So, at a nutshell, this is the uh, DB framework which which exists as of today. Uh, uh, you have, I mean, I think um, the only driver that was functional end to end was JTA database and uh, MySQL. So we have added all the other uh, drivers. Um, word of caution here: Oracle and uh, PostgreSQL is something uh, which does not function in every scenarios. Uh, there are a lot of SQL differences between uh, Oracle, SQL Server, and MySQL. So those are the things that we are working through. Okay, the, this is the second part of the DB framework uh, where you have the database um, a query and the query element for each of the drivers. Uh, which for MySQL, SQL Azure, and uh, SQL uh, Server. So moving forward, um, the SQL uh, that we need to write uh, to support MultiDB uh, cannot be MySQL specific. Uh, sort of follow a standard uh, to support all the commercial databases. Uh, big majority of the commercial database implement uh, the ANSI SQL standard, uh, ANSI SQL 2003. Uh, adopt the DB framework. Uh, there is no need to actually write the query. Uh, you just leverage the DB framework uh, to, f to construct the SQL queries uh, in your code and uh, <coughs> um, avoid using a lot of this uh, MySQL related stuff. So this is an example snippet uh, where if you want to do a query, get the DBO object, use the query object. And if you want to select uh, something uh, from a database, you can always do query from uh, banners. Uh, 
here the only uh, issue is uh, this is again this part is specific to MySQL none of the other databases uh, support that so we have overridden some of these methods for name code and all that so use that method uh, to override or generate those queries so it's the same thing these are, these are running through the examples which has um, you know when you want to do a select when you want to do a join uh, use the use the framework rather than hard coding anything specific to mysql especially in joins uh, you know, in MySQL, you know, you have a left join and a right join, and Oracle ha uh, implements the same thing in a different way, uh, and SQL Server implements it in a different way. PostgreSQL has it in a different way. Though uh, everybody claim that it is all uh, ANSI SQL compliant, um, the implementation part is different. It returns different results. Uh, so the uh, recommendation here is to use the dv framework to do the joins uh, this is again uh, some of the examples uh, for joining out uh, on user so as of today uh, the uh, the whole joomla code that we have uh, contributed is part of this branch um, under database uh, the mo the most recent stable release of uh, joomla 1.6 multi db is available on this branch and um, i think this is the base uh, where uh, folks are checking out from here or exporting it from here or using it from here uh, as of today, uh, we have uh, merged uh, the code from one uh, with 1.6.3. I, th I think in the next couple of days or a week or so, we will be uh, contributing that part. So whatever you have, Joomla 1.6 multi DB with will be uh, same as uh, Joomla 1.6.3. Uh, that that would be contributed back. Uh, this is a YouTube video that we had uh, done some time back to uh, quickly demonstrate Joomla functioning on SQL Server. Uh, YouTube, uh, you know, you can go to youtube.com, search for the handle Huduku, you will find a lot of uh, Joomla related uh, uh, videos which will, I mean, I think Joomla on SQL Server, Oracle, all of that is shown there. In terms of the extensions, um, again, I think it's the same thing. Uh, you, you need to just leverage the DB framework, avoid uh, MySQL specific syntax, uh, predominantly in the group by clause, order by, joins, case when, uh, MySQL escapes, uh, lock and unlocking a table, which is supported in MySQL, but it is not in uh, SQL Server. So quickly uh, demonstrate the end-to-end -end functionality. Um, uh, I mean, I like to think uh, like how exactly this is going to make a difference. I mean, how, how is the performance and all that stuff which we are working right now. But at the same time, just writing the driver uh, is just one part of it. Uh, I just wanted to see how it functions end-to-end. -end. So we have some demo sites. These are uh, customer sites uh, which will go into production in the next uh, four to six weeks. So <clears throat> this is the uh, dam. This is the life site. Uh, Brown Printing Company. This is the life site. They use uh, some uh, extensions like the RS Farm and a couple of uh, you know Google uh, plugins, uh, the search plugin, search optimization plugins. So. <clears throat> 
Um, this is again uh, the, the complete company has a SQL, it's a SQL server shop. Uh, this is the only web asset that is running on MySQL and uh, that's why they saw this, uh, you know, our postings uh, on various forums um, and then that's when they contacted us. Uh, uh, one area that uh, we, we still need to work is uh, somehow have a way of uh, backing up the site, uh, you know, backup and restore capability into the site. Uh, for SQL Server, we don't have that yet, uh, but that is something uh, I'm looking at it. Uh, some of the uh, available backup and restore capability within Joomla world. So this is the uh, this is the site which is going to be deployed uh, on the uh, you know instead of the customer side this is what is going to be deployed. Um, you have these uh, you know it, it's the same thing we haven't modified uh, anything uh, from the content standpoint. Uh, we have even ported uh, RS Farm extension onto SQL Server uh, to use the DB framework and C uh, SQL Server uh, specific uh, functions, and it does wor seem to work. The I think one example is here. So you have the form here and it gets submitted and uh, yeah, this is the one which is an RS form and then there are a couple of plugins which, which just needs to be ported into a 1.6 because the current uh, customer website is on 1.5. We just need to port those plugins uh, to be compatible with 1.6. And then, um, you know, uh, another thing is Just looking at the website, uh, you don't. You guys don't need to trust me. I'll just show you the packet. So here, uh, this is uh, this website um, is running on SQL Server 2008. It's a SQL Express. Uh, there's not much difference between SQL Server and SQL Express, except that you know there are some of the reporting and complex analytics is not available in SQL Express. Uh, everything else is same. Uh, we haven't modified. Uh, any of the functionality, uh, fun if the uh, functionality works on MySQL, the same functionality works on SQL Server, absolutely no difference. Uh, the sorting, pa uh, pagination, uh, configuration, nothing has been changed. Uh, everything works the way it works on MySQL. It's, that, it's, it's just that the way, uh, uh, the only thing that we have modified is the driver part of it and then Wherever there were uh, there was like uh, MySQL specific queries, we have modified that part of the code to call the framework, not really the uh, not really the hard coded MySQL queries. Uh, another site um, we have also done this. Uh, uh, let me show you the article manager as well. So all of this works. Uh, you have the article manager published. This is the article manager, I mean article creation screen. Uh, we haven't modified again any of this. Oh, 
we might have uh, disabled the tiny MC part here, but other than that. So before moving on, any questions so far? Yeah, we use the SQL specific. I mean, again, those are all abstracted in the appropriate DB classes. Is it? Yeah. And you use, uh, just curious what the solution was to get. The I don't remember the top of my head, but let so me, uh, yeah. I, I can, I, I can look at it after. You ran it with another query and select top from it in the sense of the Yeah, I mean, it's. Does it impact the, the performance? I've not really worked with access, but it probably uh, Yes, uh, it's very close to access. Yeah, access, yeah. Uh, I, have, I have a few questions. Uh, does it, uh, so you call server, uh, does it uh, repeat that again? Yeah, it, it, it's the same thing. It's just that the some of the functions that is uh, that that are uh, ve this, that are specific to the database, uh, but in that case, the abstraction layer handles those sort of calls. Well, I asked because I'm making backups for making a backup. So uh, if I want to backup the database, I uh, I can't really use the the Joomla driver. I have to go to a deeper level than what is allowed with. Uh, so the driver itself has a um, get tables and um, get fields and that kind of stuff. But like, uh, I SQL Server doesn't need get fields and need the Yeah, you need the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and you can get most of it. There's a flag that lets you get some of the details about the fields. But uh, to my understanding, SQL Server doesn't have the capability to sort of export or create something. Kind of, uh, the state, but yeah, it's, it's more complex, and the driver does not handle that. The manager has, when you work with the enterprise manager or the SQL server, it has. Yes, 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 yes. 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 But from, from the driver, it's, it's not as. Yeah, but again, uh, the way it works is uh, in SQL Server, uh, you know, in MySQL you have this uh, dump of the create statement insert and all that. In database, uh, you'll have to do a backup, like the SQL Server has a backup. Uh, you, you can execute that command from within the uh, code, from your PHP code to backup. Yeah, it's a binary backup. And then you restore it back onto the SQL. Yeah, that is something that's that's exactly where we are uh, working on a backup thing and uh, we looked at uh, uh, easy, uh, I think easy cloner or something and then looked at Akiba backup uh, and then uh, looked at it, but we haven't started uh, investigating those part yet. Yeah. That's something, yeah. yeah. So one of the Yeah. Can I can I volunteer that we have that discussion maybe after the presentation at Microsoft? Sure. Uh, sure. And I'd love to I'd love to actually expand on that. Okay. Because I want to understand what your needs are. Uh, besides the NC SQL support, I hear that everybody's you know they're not on the same updates, of course. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to we'll have to figure out how to help you. Cool. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, well, the issue is that 
you can add the core coding with nice, nice form queries using the proper query builder. But most components, they just whack in the, the, the oh, query and uh, hard code because they never have to. You know, well, the query builder is from 1.6, mm -hmm. so and a lot of components are kind of they've moved to 1.6, but they've just kind of done the minimum to the really read on the queries. So it's really nice to have a, a tool that you can just uh, you know, click analyze our component and it's like, you know, like a static analysis tool for Yeah, you just, you know, just then you can just uh, learn the device and get through and know that they have not missed the query somewhere that they have. Yeah, that, that is something in the plans. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, we need to do that is also for the extensions uh, that uh, where we, we need to sort of have a uh, sort of a, uh, a uh, piece of code which will check all the extension code, make sure they are not hard coding anything to one specific database. So that's in the plans. Uh, yeah. And some of the slides uh, does uh, address those uh, those issues, like wherever you have hard coded to MySQL, just use the query builder to do it. Any questions so far? General, sorry, another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to what we talked about, the create tables, uh, is that, I'm not really too into databases out there, but uh, is that something we could put in the yeah, it it you can you can do that. Uh, the one of the things that we have done is also like the create tables Joomla dot SQL and uh, sample data dot SQL uh, have been ported for different databases. It has been ported to MySQL. We have we have ported that to um, uh, Oracle. Again. <coughs> Uh, the problem with that is, uh, if we, we can have an ANSI SQL standard, but then when it, uh, you know, in in uh, certain databases, you need you need to set the identity off, like in SQL Server. But in our, uh, in MySQL, it does not care about that. So that, those are the reasons why <coughs> uh, we have uh, generated different my uh, sample data dot SQL Joomla dot SQL for. Yeah, 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 and then. Well, I, I do fabric, and, it kind of, and it's a, a component that will create and alter tables. And I think from the last time I looked, there's, there's not a you know, query create you know, right. uh, that, because it's not one thing that most people would need. Right. right. We, started, uh, we started some work on being able to uh, define um, those sorts of things in XML and you know, import and export. And I think we built something for MySQL that's not anything else at this point. Is there any record of that? Yeah, it's uh, GitHub. GitHub slash Joomla. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show <coughs> is also the CDN support. Um, for the popular uh, providers uh, like the Amazon and uh, Azure, um, you uh, it's again natively supported. Um, it's in the global configuration. Uh, this is another modification that we have done uh, for the CDN, where you 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 have the ability to choose the CDN and then the account ID and the access key, and then all the images get uh, synced up with. Um, with the CDN.
the net is slow here so so <clears throat> even on the cdn we have uh, we have mimicked the same directory structure so uh, whatever you have on the uh, on the images folder is uh, the same structure, the directory structure is what you would see on the uh, Azure part of it. So all these images are getting rendered from the um, uh, from Azure and when you actually upload it, it gets uploaded to Azure storage or S3. One question, uh, I think Azure supports uh, objects up to 64 megabytes, uh, so you, you just can no, right now we are storing it as a blob storage and you can make those blob storage as a CDN. I think recently they announced that part of it. So your any blob storage account can be enabled as a CDN. Yeah, I know that the, the maximum uh, size of a single item in the, in the blob storage I think is 64 megabytes. Okay. So you, you have that limitation. We have not uh, encountered that yet, but yeah, that, that's a good point. I'll, I'll definitely try that out. Yeah. It's very interesting for videos because most users will try to, to use the CDN for video files. So right, right, right. And then one, uh, since we have modified here, we have a plugin which will check whether um, whether the uh, whether there is a CDN account configured in the back end and accordingly uh, renders uh, some of the images uh, or all the images uh, from the CDN and not from the local images folder. Is, uh, setup, is this setup install available also when you install it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There, we have created two branches. One is uh, we, we didn't want to really um, uh, mix up both so we have one branch is the for the multi db and the other branch is the cdn branch um, we call it uh, right now for our practical purpose we have called it as azure branch uh, but then uh, at some point in time it will have more uh, support for amazon s3 and all that stuff This doesn't have images. Um, let me go back to the images part. Yeah, the image source is rendered from the blob, from the blob store here, not really from the local. So there is a plugin which actually checks whether whether the Azure configuration or the CDN configuration exists, and accordingly makes that uh, makes that uh, it just goes and prefixes the UR image source because we are still maintaining the same structure. Uh, the same directory structure on the cloud. It's mirroring the, the local media directory to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is another useful functionality within Joomla core. Um, uh, you know, just leveraging the same thing, you can also, you know, there is this, there are a lot of plugins which does lazy backup and all that stuff in Joomla. If we can modify those plugins and then uh, do a lazy backup onto my cloud storage, all my data. That's already there. Your backup already supports my Yeah, but support. it doesn't do it for, you know, a SQL Server and all that stuff. And then... Okay. I, that's what I, I want to... Yeah, right, right, right. So that's something uh, we can make it work with this. So.
Does that work with the templates as well? Content in the templates? Content in template, uh, no, only the media, uh, media stuff because again, uh, templates, if you want to up, uh, do that, uh, upload all your images into the media uh, and then use it rather than, uh, we, we can't support it in every other images because even the extensions might have images and it becomes like a nightmare to uh, implement in every place and the other uh, i think this could this is a, an issue with ma majority of the content management system uh, none of us actually follow a standard hey images should be in this folder e uh, you know your media file should be in this folder it's all over the place uh, so you know that's the that's the limitation from how it has been implemented and we'll have to work through those limitations Uh, the the branch has the plugin, uh, the Azure plugin. Um, the uh, same thing will have an Amazon plugin as well, S3 plugin, at some point in time. And then all the libraries that integrates the CDN, um, uh, that integrates the CDN uh, f with Azure and Amazon has already been checked in, so it's already there. Those APIs and uh, whatever uh, S3 APIs you need, it's already there, part of the Joomla libraries, Microsoft, Joomla libraries, Amazon, uh, but that's a separate branch. <coughs> and then the other thing that we also did was, um, you know, we all have seen uh, from the Linux, uh, you know, there are s several of these Linux clouds and we, at some point in time, we have always deployed uh, Joomla on Linux, but uh, Azure is uh, the recent entrant, but it, it does cloud in a different way, so we, that also is uh, implemented. I mean, I just wanted to show you how that is deployed and how it works. Again, this uh, it's going through the installation. Okay. It already had a configuration. Anyway, I don't know the SQL Azure configuration. We need SQL Azure for it. So anyway. Uh, so we also have implemented this uh, Joomla deployed on Azure. Uh, it's again a single instance if you want to do like a multi-instance scale out and highly scalable websites, uh, that's something we are working on, which should be available in next two, three weeks. Any questions so far? Okay. Can I? Yeah. So one more thing, uh, I know um, MySQL gets um, 
package with any of the LAMP, WAMP, MAMP thing, uh, SQL Server or SQL Express does not. Uh, SQL Express is uh, freely downloadable from the Microsoft website. The latest is uh, SQL Server 2008 R2. And then you need a PHP SQL Server driver um, uh, to connect uh, connect uh, uh, your PHP code with your SQL database. Uh, you can download the latest uh, PHP for SQL from this link. Uh, and then I think the latest release is like 2.0 or something. Uh, so that's something you can download. All you need to do is uh, take the VC++ uh, compiled VC++ version 6.4 uh, 6.0 compiled DLL files and copy it into your under extensions folder uh, you know wherever your XAMPP is or WAMP uh, WAMP folder is there, there is an uh, PHP slash ext folder so you just have to copy it there and then start with Joomla installation select SQL server as your database and it will work by the way, you got to use SQL Server 2008. Uh, we don't support SQL Server 2005 because there are certain subtle, subtle differences between 2005 and 2008. And it's a good idea to go to the cloud because you're like 2008. Yeah, yeah. Okay, none of this would have been possible uh, with all the people listed out there. When I have spoken to several people within the community who have helped us in one way or the other answering a question on a forum. Um, I don't even know them, uh, but these people have helped me in understanding um, a specific pro a solution for a problem and things like that. So I can't even, uh, I don't even know their names. That's why I had to mention several individuals from community. And by no means I'm ignorant of them, but it's just that I, I don't remember those names. Is this question and answer mode? Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. So I'm just curious, you've got, you know, a bunch of names listed here, you've got five great people from the leadership team and people that have helped out in development and um, your own team, et cetera. Can you give just a, a short overview as to how it went from idea to now being ready to be included in the, a new version of Joomla? Well, uh, f the idea was, um, you know, it, um, we were working on, um, we were, we were working on one major implementation and w with a client and one of the reasons why Joomla was not selected was uh, it was a SQL server shop and um, we had a lot of PHP resources but then we we did not have uh, we did not have uh, uh, Joomla available on SQL Server. And another client they had Oracle and they, they they had PHP resources, but that's again a problem. So we for the first thing that we did was um, I, it, for me it was pretty new to Joomla, and I really did not know the dynamics of Joomla from CMS uh, standpoint as well as how it would function in a larger scale scenario. So that's why as a proof of concept, we actually took Joomla 1.5, ported completely to Oracle, leveraging the existing Oracle driver, but then again, MySQL specific things. So we completely, we took 1.5 and 1.6 was not really ready and there was no, uh, deadline as to when the 1.6 officially would be released. So we had to take 1.5 ported completely to Oracle. That gave us a lot of confidence because Oracle uh, con uh, comparatively uh, is uh, quite uh, hard uh, to do it in terms of porting any application into Oracle because they, they have their own way of uh, doing some things like creating tables and all that, all the, you know, it's all minor things, but it takes a lot of time with Oracle. So that gave us a lot of confidence, and that's when we spoke to the Joomla leadership team. Uh, uh, 
volunteered to be the gold development sponsor for the project and then uh, we were introduced to Mark Dexter and uh, Lewis and Lewis uh, looked at our work and said um, we have tons of work to do but you know you guys have done something in database uh, let's do database uh, you you know focus on things that you do well so that's when uh, Lewis uh, created a branch database branch those days he was uh, easily accessible <laughs> so extreme I mean quite frankly he was uh, easily accessible so he created a branch uh, and then we started working on the branch and then again Lewis was nice enough to hook us up with uh, the Microsoft team they were trying to they had recently uh, signed up the uh, JCA or whatever they call it, Joomla Contributor Agreement and they wanted to see Joomla um, uh, port it to their platform like the SQL Server and SQL Azure and that's when we started uh, taking that seriously like we, since we had already done Oracle that uh, we were pretty confident that Oracle is achievable so that's when we said okay we, let's do it with SQL Server because with Oracle we can always leverage the code that we had already done so we started on SQL Server and then we spent uh, close to uh, two, two, two and a half months uh, completing SQL Server not much difference between SQL Server and SQL Azure both of them uh, the only difference is the you know uh, Azure is available on the cloud uh, so uh, it was pretty straightforward to do it. Then we got a test account with uh, for, from Azure, um, and then we started testing it out. And then we started with Windows Azure. I think it, it took us the whole uh, cycle has taken us like uh, six to seven months, uh, starting from uh, starting the dream, uh, you know, uh, of seeing Joomla on uh, multi database uh, till here. Uh, I'm. I wouldn't say we are uh, we are we are done and uh, you know dream is fulfilled but I'm very close to that very very close because I can literally see the code that uh, we have done uh, part of Lewis uh, fork uh, the Joomla CMS platform um, and then I spoke to Andrew last week uh, it's part of that as well uh, his fork as well so Pretty sure, not, uh, unless a disaster happens <laughs> from our side, uh, I do not anticipate uh, anything to stop this contribution part. Mm -hmm. And I know um, I've not mentioned uh, um, uh, Rayan here, but uh, he's, uh, he pretty much uh, is the head of Joomla leadership team, so that's why I mentioned that. And, I hope that's okay because there are a lot of people who have helped us apart from uh, Ryan and Steve and all these people. So. And Lewis, just from like the the fresh leadership team perspective, so we've now got a branch that's almost 100% mature and ready for a go time. I guess is what you're saying, right? I guess now the POT will look at those branches and then see if it's ready to be put into the beta cycle for. Yeah, pretty much. There's a, uh, a level of complexity because it comes at a time when we're trying to separate the platform from the CMS, and that's what we're sort of wrangling right now. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, uh, everybody that's looked at it has said this is something that we want to do, so it's a matter of sort of just making everything come together. And how long that takes, I'm not real sure, but it's it's definitely what we, what we want to do. And this is the type of contribution that's, I don't know if it's unique, but this is going into the platform project and not well, it's both, right? Because, because it's right because all the the low level libraries and all that kind of stuff, we we reworked what we had incorporated with um, Sudi and his team that have written and sort of trying to you know make it be the foundation for all of the new drivers that we want to build in the future as well, right? Because we have rudimentary support for Oracle and Postgres, but we want to really build that out more too, as well as add any other any other ones that are interesting. Uh, and the other piece to that is all the obviously all the work in, in the CMS that we haven't touched quite yet to really coming out of the branch. Because there's a lot of things, you know, as he pointed out, all over the place you've got the little back text that my MySQL uses and they're just 
non-standard and uh, everything from a pin cat operation to you know the case wins and all those sorts of things. You just have to make sure that it's all legit into the database dri driver uh, builder, query builder, and all that kind of stuff. And I expect CV is going to be helping itself a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would uh, really want to uh, take uh, the ownership of maintaining uh, the drivers for all these databases, continue maintaining that uh, drivers uh, moving forward on, I mean, if possible, on both platform as well as CMS. Because it's in our own interest, uh, now, in, now that in the next four to six weeks we have, we have a live customer with, with whom we are going live, um, it, it gives them a lot of confidence that it is part of the core and they don't need to worry about the support and all that. If uh, I get knocked down or uh, my team is out, uh, somebody else can take it over and still support it. So. Yeah. The biggest challenge with this stuff is actually the maintenance, which is, I'm sure you're, you're not going to get off easy enough. <laughs> so, uh, and obviously, setting up, we've been setting up virtual machines so that we've got multiple database platforms that we can run on any testing and all this stuff. And the other thing is also about the extensions that we need to work with the extensions team. Uh, to that effect, uh, you know, uh, call it a hidden agenda. I'm also part of the JED now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I want to be really part of that as well. Um, so, I mean, that's why I volunteer to be part of the JED, and then um, you know, talking to Matt and uh, his team to see w what's the best way to identify these extensions as uh, you know, hey, supporting multi DB or supporting just MySQL or supporting just SQL Server. So the extensions developer can be uh, can also start uh, writing code to reach out multi db and you know maximize his uh, you know his financial outcome so what would this mean for a um, a component developer that's got 1.6 components and that's ready to go to 1.7 are they going to have to completely rewrite their component to try mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing that they would ever do is just use the DB framework or the query builder uh, in their queries as long as it can be installed on uh, as long as it can be installed on 1.6 installation all they need to do is modify their uh, MySQL specific queries to just use the query builder. And that's only if they want to yeah, they can still do this. Uh, so they, if 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 uh, if we, if there is an extension that only supports MySQL, then they can still go ahead and install that, and it will only function on MySQL. It wouldn't work on other databases. And we have tested it um, multiple times. Um, so there's one other piece that you, you're forgetting, and that is they'll have to uh, write the install script in a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been yeah. Part of the installation stuff since Jumo one five. It's just that it's not been leveraged because we didn't have support for the other databases. Yeah, the, the, there is a, a separate element that uh, you need to include, uh, stating that which which database it is, and uh, that's about it. Uh, and then, of course, any SQLs that you have should also be part of, uh, you know, that package that you deploy. I think that Zuma 1.6 already is using the data because uh, you need to, to provide uh, different entries for MySQL and MySQL Yeah, that's already there. Yeah, that's already there, but, uh, you know, uh, um, there are certain areas where the hard coding was still there in the code as well. So those things, um, I think to a large extent we can, we have taken care of it, but you know, if you, if you guys download it and you know, figure out, hey, this is not taken care of, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can let us know. Um, on Joomla code, um, this is another interesting th thing that happened. Uh, as the branch was created, we went ahead and created a, uh, project tracker on Joomla code. Uh, so we started tracking all the issues that we encountered during the development phase. So that was interesting as well.